Pali, Pali is a Middle Indo-Aryan language native to the Indian subcontinent. It is widely studied because it is the language of the Pali Canon or Tipitaka, and is the sacred language of some religious texts of Hinduism and all texts of Theravada Buddhism. The earliest archaeological evidence of the existence of canonical Pali comes from Pyu City State's inscriptions found in Burma dated to the mid-5th to mid-6th century CE. Topic: Origin and development. Topic: <inaudible> Etymology. <inaudible> the word Pali is used as a name for the language of the Theravada canon. According to the Pali Text Society's dictionary, the word seems to have its origins in commentarial traditions, wherein the Pali in the sense of the line of original text quoted was distinguished from the commentary or vernacular translation that followed it in the manuscript. As such, the name of the language has caused some debate among scholars of all ages. The spelling of the name also varies, being found with both long a and short a, a and also with either a retroflex or non-retroflex l. L sound. Both the long a and retroflex l are seen in the ISO 15919, ALA LC rendering, Pali. However, to this day there is no single, standard spelling of the term, and all four possible spellings can be found in textbooks. R. C. Childers translates the word as series and states that the language bears the epithet in consequence of the perfection of its grammatical structure. In the 19th century, the British Orientalist Robert Caesar Childers argued that the true or geographical name of the Pali language was Magadhi Prakrit, and that because Pali means line, row, series, the early Buddhists extended the meaning of the term to mean a series of books, so Palabasa means language of the texts. However, modern scholarship has regarded Pali as a mix of several Prakrit languages from around the 3rd century BCE, combined together and partially Sanskritized. The closest artifacts to Pali that have been found in India are edicts of Ashoka found at Gujarat, in the west of India, leading some scholars to associate Pali with this region of western India. Topic. Classification. There is persistent confusion as to the relation of Pali to the vernacular spoken in the ancient kingdom of Magadha, which was located around modern-day Bihar. Pali, as a Middle Indo-Aryan language, is different from Sanskrit more with regard to its dialectal base than the time of its origin. A number of its morphological and lexical features show that it is not a direct continuation of Arjvedic Vedic Sanskrit. Instead it descends from one or more dialects that were, despite many similarities, different from Arjvedic. However, this view is not shared by all scholars. Some, like A.C. Woolner, believe that Pali is derived from Vedic Sanskrit, but not necessarily from classical Sanskrit. <laughs> Early history Pali and Paisachi Paisachi is a largely unattested literary language of classical India that is mentioned in Prakrit and Sanskrit grammars of antiquity. It is found grouped with the Prakrit languages, with which it shares some linguistic similarities, but was not considered a spoken language by the early grammarians because it was understood to have been purely a literary language. In works of Sanskrit poetics such as Dandan's Kavyadarsha, it is also known by the name of Buddhabhasa, an epithet which can be interpreted as dead language, i.e., with no surviving speakers, or Buddha means past and Bhasha means language, i.e., a language spoken in the past. Evidence which lends support to this interpretation is that literature in Paisachi is fragmentary and extremely rare but may once have been common. There is no known complete work in this language, however, several scholars specializing in Indology such as Sten Konau, Felix Lakote and Alfred Master, have argued that Paisachi was the ancient name for Pali. Theravada Buddhism Many Theravada sources refer to the Pali language as Magadhan or the language of Magadha. This identification first appears in the commentaries, and may have been an attempt by Buddhists to associate themselves more closely with the Maurya Empire. 
but the four most important places in Buddha's life are all outside of it. It is likely that he taught in several closely related dialects of Middle Indo-Aryan, which had a high degree of mutual intelligibility. There is no attested dialect of Middle Indo-Aryan with all the features of Pali. Pali has some commonalities with both the Western Ashokan edicts at Gurner in Saurashtra, and the central Western Prakrit found in the Eastern Hathagumpha inscription. The similarities of the Saurashtran inscriptions to the Hathagumpha inscription may be misleading because the latter suggests the Ashokan scribe may not have translated the material he received from Magadha into the vernacular. Whatever the relationship of the Buddha's speech to Pali, the canon was eventually transcribed and preserved entirely in it, while the commentarial tradition that accompanied it according to the information provided by Buddhahosa was translated into Sinhalese and preserved in local languages for several generations. In Sri Lanka, Pali is thought to have entered into a period of decline ending around the 4th or 5th century as Sanskrit rose in prominence, and simultaneously, as Buddhism's adherents became a smaller portion of the subcontinent, but ultimately survived. The work of Buddhahosa was largely responsible for its re-emergence as an important scholarly language in Buddhist thought. The Visuddhimagga, and the other commentaries that Buddhahosa compiled, codified and condensed the Sinhalese commentarial tradition that had been preserved and expanded in Sri Lanka since the 3rd century BCE. <laughs> Early Western views T. W. Rhys Davids in his book Buddhist India, and Wilhelm Geiger in his book Pali Literature and Language, suggested that Pali may have originated as a lingua franca or common language of culture among people who used differing dialects in North India, used at the time of the Buddha and employed by him. Another scholar states that at that time it was, "...a refined and elegant vernacular of all Aryan-speaking people." Modern scholarship has not arrived at a consensus on the issue, there are a variety of conflicting theories with supporters and detractors. After the death of the Buddha, Pali may have evolved among Buddhists out of the language of the Buddha as a new artificial language. R. C. Childers, who held to the theory that Pali was old Magadhi, wrote, "...had Gautama never preached, it is unlikely that Magadhis would have been distinguished from the many other vernaculars of Hindustan, except perhaps by an inherent grace and strength which make it a sort of Tuscan among the Prakrits." According to K. R. Norman, it is likely that the Viharas in North India had separate collections of material, preserved in the local dialect. In the early period it is likely that no degree of translation was necessary in communicating this material to other areas. Around the time of Ashoka there had been more linguistic divergence, and an attempt was made to assemble all the material. It is possible that a language quite close to the Pali of the canon emerged as a result of this process as a compromise of the various dialects in which the earliest material had been preserved, and this language functioned as a lingua franca among Eastern Buddhists in India from then on. Following this period, the language underwent a small degree of Sanskritization i.e., Mia Bamhana greater than Brahmana, TTA greater than TVA in some cases. Topic. Modern scholarship Bhikkhu Bodhi, summarizing the current state of scholarship, states that the language is "...closely related to the language or, more likely, the various regional dialects that the Buddha himself spoke." He goes on to write, Scholars regard this language as a hybrid showing features of several Prakrit dialects used around the 3rd century BCE, subjected to a partial process of Sanskritization. While the language is not identical to what Buddha himself would have spoken, it belongs to the same broad language family as those he might have used and originates from the same conceptual matrix. This language thus reflects the thought world that the Buddha inherited from the wider Indian culture into which he was born, so that its words capture the subtle nuances of that thought world. According to A. K. Warder, the Pali language is a Prakrit language used in a region of western India. Warder associates Pali with the Indian realm Janapada of Avanti, where the Stavira Nikaya was centered. Following the initial split in the Buddhist community, the Stavira Nikaya became influential in western and south India while the Mahasamgika branch became influential in central and east India. Akira Hirakawa and Paul Groner also associate Pali with western India and the Stavira Nikaya, citing the Saurashtran inscriptions, which are linguistically closest to the Pali language. Pali today 
Pali is not died out as a literary language in India in the 14th century but survived elsewhere until the 18th. Today Pali is studied mainly to gain access to Buddhist scriptures, and is frequently chanted in a ritual context. The secular literature of Pali historical chronicles, medical texts, and inscriptions is also of great historical importance. The great centers of Pali learning remain in the Theravada nations of Southeast Asia, Burma, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Laos, and Cambodia. Since the 19th century, various societies for the revival of Pali studies in India have promoted awareness of the language and its literature, including the Maha Bodhi Society founded by Anagarika Dhammapala. In Europe, the Pali Text Society has been a major force in promoting the study of Pali by Western scholars since its founding in 1881. Based in the United Kingdom, the Society publishes Romanized Pali editions, along with many English translations of these sources. In 1869, the first Pali dictionary was published using the research of Robert Caesar Childers, one of the founding members of the Pali Text Society. It was the first Pali translated text in English and was published in 1872. Childers Dictionary later received the Volney Prize in 1876. The Pali Text Society was founded in part to compensate for the very low level of funds allocated to Indology in late 19th century England and the rest of the UK. Incongruously, the citizens of the UK were not nearly so robust in Sanskrit and Prakrit language studies as Germany, Russia, and even Denmark. Even without the inspiration of colonial holdings such as the former British occupation of Sri Lanka and Burma, institutions such as the Danish Royal Library have built up major collections of Pali manuscripts, and major traditions of Pali studies. <laughs> <laughs> Lexicon Virtually every word in Pali has cognates in the other Middle Indo Aryan languages, the Prakrits. The relationship to Vedic Sanskrit is less direct and more complicated. The Prakrits were descended from old Indo Aryan vernaculars. Historically, influence between Pali and Sanskrit has been felt in both directions. The Pali language's resemblance to Sanskrit is often exaggerated by comparing it to later Sanskrit compositions, which were written centuries after Sanskrit ceased to be a living language, and are influenced by developments in Middle Indic, including the direct borrowing of a portion of the Middle Indic lexicon, whereas, a good deal of later Pali technical terminology has been borrowed from the vocabulary of equivalent disciplines in Sanskrit, either directly or with certain phonological adaptations. Post canonical Pali also possesses a few loan words from local languages where Pali was used e.g. Sri Lankans adding Sinhalese words to Pali. These usages differentiate the Pali found in the Suttapitaka from later compositions such as the Pali commentaries on the canon and folklore e.g., commentaries on the Jataka tales, and comparative study and dating of texts on the basis of such loan words is now a specialized field unto itself. Pali was not exclusively used to convey the teachings of the Buddha, as can be deduced from the existence of a number of secular texts, such as books of medical science, instruction, in Pali. However, scholarly interest in the language has been focused upon religious and philosophical literature, because of the unique window it opens on one phase in the development of Buddhism. <laughs> Emic views of Pali Although Sanskrit was said in the Brahmanical tradition to be the unchanging language spoken by the gods, in which each word had an inherent significance, this view of language was not shared in the early Buddhist tradition, in which words were only conventional and mutable signs. This view of language naturally extended to Pali, and may have contributed to its usage as an approximation or standardization of local Middle Indic dialects in place of Sanskrit. However, by the time of the compilation of the Pali commentaries 4th or 5th century, Pali was regarded as the natural language, the root language of all beings, comparable to ancient Egyptian, Latin or Hebrew in the mystic traditions of the West. Pali recitations were often thought to have a supernatural power which could be attributed to their meaning, the character of the reciter, or the qualities of the language itself, and in the early strata of Buddhist literature we can already see Pali Dharanis used as charms, as, for example, against the bite of snakes. 
Many people in Theravada cultures still believe that taking a vow in Pali has a special significance, and, as one example of the supernatural power assigned to chanting in the language, the recitation of the vows of Angulamala are believed to alleviate the pain of childbirth in Sri Lanka. In Thailand, the chanting of a portion of the Abhidhamapitaka is believed to be beneficial to the recently departed, and this ceremony routinely occupies as much as seven working days. There is nothing in the latter text that relates to this subject, and the origins of the custom are unclear. Phonology Vowels Long and short vowels are only contrastive in open syllables, in closed syllables, all vowels are always short. Short and long e and o are in complementary distribution, the short variants occur only in closed syllables, the long variants occur only in open syllables. Short and long e and o are therefore not distinct phonemes. A sound called anisvara skt, Pali, nigahita, represented by the letter m ISO or m ala lc in romanization, and by a raised dot in most traditional alphabets, originally marked the fact that the preceding vowel was nasalized. That is, m, im and um represented a, i, and u. In many traditional pronunciations, however, the anisvara is pronounced more strongly, like the velar nasal, so that these sounds are pronounced instead a, I, and u. However pronounced, m never follows a long vowel, a, i and u are converted to the corresponding short vowels when m is added to a stem ending in a long vowel, e.g. katha plus m becomes katham, not asterisk katham, devi plus m becomes devam, not asterisk devam. Consonants <coughs> <coughs> The table below lists the consonants of Pali. In bold is the transliteration of the letter in traditional romanization, and in square brackets its pronunciation transcribed in the IPA. Of the sounds listed above only the three consonants in parentheses, N, L, and Lach, are not distinct phonemes in Pali, N only occurs before velar stops, while L and Lach are allophones of single D and DH occurring between vowels. Morphology Pali is a highly inflected language, in which almost every word contains, besides the root conveying the basic meaning, one or more affixes usually suffixes which modify the meaning in some way. Nouns are inflected for gender, number, and case. Verbal inflections convey information about person, number, tense and mood. Nominal inflection Pali nouns inflect for three grammatical genders masculine, feminine, and neuter and two numbers singular and plural. The nouns also, in principle, display eight cases, nominative or pakata case, vocative, accusative or upayoga case, instrumental or karana case, dative or sampadana case, ablative, genitive or samin case, and locative or bhuma case. However, in many instances, two or more of these cases are identical in form. This is especially true of the genitive and dative cases. Topic: A stems. A stems, whose uninflected stem ends in short a, are either masculine or neuter. The masculine and neuter forms differ only in the nominative, vocative, and accusative cases. Topic: A stems. Nouns ending in a, a are almost always feminine. Topic: I stems and u stems. I stems and U stems are either masculine or neuter. The masculine and neuter forms differ only in the nominative and accusative cases. The vocative has the same form as the nominative. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Linguistic analysis of a Pali text. From the opening of the Dhammapada, Manopubhangama Dhamma, Manasetha Manamaya. Manasa ce paduththina, basati va karati va. 
Tato nam dukam anveti, kakamva vahato padam, element for element gloss. Mano puban gamma dam a, mano set the mano mayo. Mind dash before dash going dash m dot pl dot nom, dharma dash m dot pl dot nom, mind dash foremost dash m dot pl dot nom, mind dash made dash m dot pl dot nom. Manas a equals c e padut ina, basa t equals va caro t equals va. Mind dash n dot sg dot inst, equals if corrupted dash n dot sg dot inst, speak dash three dot sg dot pr, equals either act dash three dot sg dot pr, equals or ta to nam dukam anvet, kakam va vahat o pad am. That from him suffering after dash go dash three dot sg dot pr, wheel is carrying beast dash m dot sg dot gen, foot dash n dot sg dot acc dot. The three compounds in the first line literally mean Manopubangama, whose precursor is mind, having mind as a foregoer or leader. Manasetha, whose foremost member is mind, having mind as chief. Manamaya, consisting of mind or made by mind the literal meaning is therefore the dharmas have mind as their leader mind as their chief are made of by mind if someone either speaks or acts with a corrupted mind from that cause suffering goes after him as the wheel of a cart follows the foot of a draft animal a slightly freer translation by acharya buddharakita mind precedes all mental states mind is their chief they are all mind rot if with an impure mind a person speaks or acts suffering follows him like the wheel that follows the foot of the ox. Arda Magadhi The Indo-Aryan languages are commonly assigned to three major groups, Old, Middle and New Indo-Aryan. The classification reflects consecutive stages in a common linguistic development, but is not merely a matter of chronology. Classical Sanskrit, as a codified derivate of Vedic Sanskrit, remains mostly representative of the Old Indo Aryan stage, even though it continued to flourish at the same time as the Middle Indo Aryan languages. Conversely, a number of the morphophonological and lexical features of the Middle Indo Aryan languages show that they are not direct continuations of Rigvedic Sanskrit, the main base of classical Sanskrit. Instead they descend from other dialects similar to, but in some ways more archaic than Rigvedic. <inaudible> Sanskrit Pali and Sanskrit are very closely related and the common characteristics of Pali and Sanskrit were always easily recognized by those in Nepal who were familiar with both. Indeed, a very large proportion of Pali and Sanskrit word stems are identical in form, differing only in details of inflection. Technical terms from Sanskrit were converted into Pali by a set of conventional phonological transformations. These transformations mimicked a subset of the phonological developments that had occurred in Proto Pali. Because of the prevalence of these transformations, it is not always possible to tell whether a given Pali word is a part of the old Prakrit lexicon, or a transformed borrowing from Sanskrit. The existence of a Sanskrit word regularly corresponding to a Pali word is not always secure evidence of the Pali etymology, since, in some cases, artificial Sanskrit words were created by back formation from Prakrit words. The following phonological process Processes are not intended as an exhaustive description of the historical changes which produced Pali from its old Indic ancestor, but rather are a summary of the most common phonological equations between Sanskrit and Pali, with no claim to completeness. <laughs> Vowels and diphthongs Sanskrit I and O always monophthongize to Pali E and O, respectively. Examples: Maitri Meta, Asada Osada. Sanskrit Aya and Ava likewise often reduced to Pali E and O. Examples: Daryati Dureti, Avatara Otara, Bhavati Hata. Sanskrit Avi becomes Pali E, i.e. Avi, i.e. Example: Stavira Thera. Sanskrit R appears in Pali as A, I or U, often agreeing with the vowel in the following syllable. R also sometimes becomes U after labial consonants. Examples: Kurta Kata. Nathana, Smrta Sati, RC Isi, Drsti Diti, Rdi Iddhi, Raju Uju, Spursta Puta, Verta Vudasanskrit long vowels are shortened before a sequence of two following consonants. 
Examples: Kasanti Kanti, Raja Raja, Isvara Asara, Turna Tina, Purva Puba. Topic: Consonants. Topic: Sound changes. The Sanskrit sibilants s, s, and s merge as Pali's examples, sarana sarana, dosa dosa. Sanskrit stops d and dh become l and lh between vowels as in Vedic example, kakravada kakavala, viruta virala. Assimilations General rules Many assimilations of one consonant to a neighboring consonant occurred in the development of Pali, producing a large number of geminate double consonants. Since aspiration of a geminate consonant is only phonetically detectable on the last consonant of a cluster, geminate kh, gh, ch, jh, th, dh, th, dh, ph and bh appear as kkh, ggh, cch, jjh, teeth, ddh, tth, ddh, pph and bbh, not as khkh, ghgh etc. When assimilation would produce a geminate consonant or a sequence of unaspirated stop plus aspirated stop at the beginning of a word, the initial geminate is simplified to a single consonant. Examples: prana pana, not pipiana; stavira thera, not t thera; diana jana, not jjhana; jnyati nyati, not nyunyati. When assimilation would produce a sequence of three consonants in the middle of a word, geminates are simplified until there are only two consonants in sequence. Examples: utrasa utasa, not utasa; mantra manta, not manta; indra inda, not inda; vanya vanja, not vanja. The sequence vv resulting from assimilation changes to bib. Example: sarva sava sabha, pravrajati pavajati pavajati, divya diva diva, nirvana nivana nibbana. Topic: Total assimilation. Total assimilation, where one sound becomes identical to a neighboring sound, is of two types, progressive, where the assimilated sound becomes identical to the following sound, and regressive, where it becomes identical to the preceding sound. <laughs> regressive assimilations Internal visarga assimilates to a following voiceless stop or sibilant examples: dukkada dukkada, dukkha dukkha, diprajna dupanya, nikrada equals niskrada, nikoda, nipakva equals nispakva, nipaka, nisoka nisoka, nisatva nisatane. A sequence of two dissimilar Sanskrit stops. The first stop assimilates to the second stop examples: vimukti vimuti, dugda duda, utpada upada, pujala pugala, ujhosa ugosa, adbuta abuta, sabda sadan. A sequence of two dissimilar nasal Nasals. The first nasal assimilates to the second nasal example, unmata ummata, prajumna pajanaj assimilates to a following nu, i.e., jain becomes nyun. Examples, prajna panya, jainyati nyati. Sanskrit liquid consonants r and l assimilate to a following stop, nasal, sibilant, or v. Examples, marga maga, karma kama, varsa vasa, kalpa kappa, sarva sava sabar assimilates to a following l. Examples, durlaba dullaba, nirlopa nilopad sometimes assimilates to a following v, producing vv bib. Examples, udvigna uviviga ubiga, divadasa barasa, beside divadasa, t and d may assimilate to a following s. Or y when a morpheme boundary intervenes. Examples: ut plus sava usava, ud plus y ana uiana. Topic: Progressive assimilations. Nasals sometimes assimilate to a preceding stop. In other cases, a penthesis occurs. Examples: agni agi, atman ada, prapnati papati, sanati sakodam assimilates to an initial sibilant. Examples: smarati sarati, smrta satanasals assimilate to a preceding stop plus sibilant cluster, which then develops in the same way as such clusters without following nasals. Examples: tiksna tiks atika, laksmi laksi lakhid. Sanskrit liquid consonants r and l assimilate to a preceding stop, nasal, sibilant. 
equivalent, or examples, prana pana, grama gama, sravaka savaka, agra aga, indra inda, pravrajati pavajati pavajati, asru asoy assimilates to preceding non-dental, retroflex stops or nasals examples, sayavati kavati, jyotis jati, raja raja, matsya machya machya, lapsyate lakyate lachati, abhyagata abhagata, akyati akati, samkya sankha but also sankhya, ramya rame assimilates to preceding non-initial v, producing v v b example, divya diva diva, veditavya veditava veditava, bhavya bhava babe and v assimilate to any preceding sibilant, producing s examples, pasyati pasati, sayina sena, asva asa, isvara asara, karasyati karasati, tasa tasa, svaman samav sometimes assimilates to a preceding stop examples, pakva paka, katvari katari, sattva sata, devaja daja. Topic. Partial and mutual assimilation Sanskrit sibilants before a stop assimilate to that stop, and if that stop is not already aspirated, it becomes aspirated, e.g. ski, street, street and sp become cch, tth, teeth and peef examples, paskat pacha, asti atthi, stava tava, srestha settha, asta attha, sparsa fasane sibilant stop liquid sequences, the liquid is assimilated to the preceding consonant, and the cluster behaves like sibilant stop sequences, e.g. str and stir become tth and teeth examples, sastra sasta sattha, rastra rasta rathat and p become c before s, and the sibilant assimilates to the preceding sound as an aspirate i.e., the sequences ts and ps become cch examples, vatsa vacha, asparas akara sibilant assimilates to a preceding k as an aspirate i.e., the sequence ks becomes kkh examples, bhikshu bhikkhu, kasanti kanshani dental or retroflex stop or nasal followed by y converts to the corresponding palatal sound, and the y is assimilates to this new consonant, i.e. thai, thai, di, dhy, ny become cc, cch, jj, jjh, nyun, likewise ni becomes nyun. Nasals preceding a stop that becomes palatal share this change, examples, tyajati syajati kahati, satya sasya saka, mithya mitya mitya, vidya vidya via, madya madya madya, anya anya anya, punya punya punya, vandya 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 vandjith sequence mister becomes mb, via the apenthesis of a stop between the nasal and liquid, followed by assimilation of the liquid to the stop and subsequent simplification of the resulting geminate. Examples, amra ambra amba, tamra tamba. Topic. Apenthesis An epenthetic vowel is sometimes inserted between certain consonant sequences. As with R, the vowel may be A, I, or U, depending on the influence of a neighboring consonant or of the vowel in the following syllable. I is often found near I, Y, or palatal consonants, U is found near U, V, or labial consonants. Sequences of stop plus nasal are sometimes separated by a or u example, ratna ratana, padma paduma u influenced by labial m the sequence sn may become sin initially examples, snana sanana, sneha sinahai may be inserted between a consonant and l examples, klesa kilisa, glana galana, malayati milayati, slagati silahation epenthetic vowel may be inserted between an initial sibilant and r example, shri sarith sequence rai generally becomes riy i influenced by following y but is still treated as a two-consonant sequence for the purposes of vowel shortening example, aria aria aria, surya surya surya, virya 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 or i is inserted between r and h example, arhati arahati, garha garaha, baris barihisathir is sporadic apenthesis between other consonant sequence examples, katya sitya not cheka, vajra vahira not vaja. Topic. Other changes. Any Sanskrit sibilant before a nasal becomes a sequence of nasal followed by h, i.e. sn, sn and sm become nh, nh, and m examples, tersna tana, usnisa unhisa, asmi amhith sequence sn becomes nih, due to assimilation of the n to the preceding palatal sibilant example, prasna prasnya panyath sequences hi and hv undergo metathesis examples, jiva jivha, griya geha, guya gaiha undergoes metathesis with a following nasal example, gurnati ganati is geminated between e and a vowel examples, sreyas seya, maitriya metayavoist aspirates 
such as BH and GH on rare occasions become examples. Bhavati Hoti, Ebi's EHI, Lagu Lahudental, and Retroflex sounds sporadically change into one another examples, Jnana Nyana, not Nyana, Dahati Dahati, beside Pali Dahati, Nida Nila, not Nila, Stana Tana, not Tana, Dukkarta Dakata, beside Pali Dakata. Topic: Exceptions. There are several notable exceptions to the rules above. Many of them are common Prakrit words rather than borrowings from Sanskrit. Arya Aya, beside Arya. Guru Guru, Aj, beside Guru N. Purusha Purisa, not Purusha. Virksa Ruksa Ruka, not Vaka. Topic. Writing Topic Alphabet with diacritics Emperor Ashoka erected a number of pillars with his edicts in at least three regional Prakrit languages in Brahmi script, all of which are quite similar to Pali. Historically, the first written record of the Pali canon is believed to have been composed in Sri Lanka, based on a prior oral tradition. As per the Mahavamsa, the Chronicle of Sri Lanka, due to a major famine in the country, Buddhist monks wrote down the Pali Canon during the time of King Vatagamini in 100 BCE. The transmission of written Pali has retained a universal system of alphabetic values, but has expressed those values in a stunning variety of actual scripts. In Sri Lanka, Pali texts were recorded in Sinhalese script. Other local scripts, most prominently Khmer, Burmese, and in modern times Thai since 1893, Devanagari and Mon script Burma have been used to record Pali. Since the 19th century, Pali has also been written in the Roman script. An alternate scheme devised by Franz Velduis, called the Velduis scheme see section text in ASCII, allows for typing without diacritics using plain ASCII methods, but is arguably less readable than the standard IAST system, which uses diacritical marks. The Pali alphabetical order is as follows aaiiuuomkkhggghncchjjhnuttthdhnttthddhnppbhbbhmyrlvs, although a single sound, is written with ligature of L and H. Topic transliteration On computers there are several fonts to use for poly transliteration. However, older ASCII fonts such as Leedsbit Palatranslate, Times underscore Norman, Times underscore CSX Plus, SKT Times, VRI Roman Poly CN, CB etc., are not recommendable, they are deprecated, since they are not compatible with one another, and are technically out of date. Instead, fonts based on the Unicode standard are recommended. However, not all Unicode fonts contain the necessary characters. To properly display all the diacritic marks used for Romanized Pali or for that matter, Sanskrit, a Unicode font must contain the following character ranges, basic Latin, U plus 0000 U plus 007 F Latin 1 supplement, U plus 0080 U plus 00 FF Latin extended A, U plus 0100 U plus 017 F Latin extended B, U plus 0180 U plus 024 F Latin extended additional, U plus 1 E00 U plus 1 F some Unicode fonts freely available for typesetting Romanized Pali are as follows. The Pali Text Society recommends VU Times and Gandhari Unicode for Windows and Linux computers. The Tibetan and Himalayan Digital Library recommends Times Ext Roman, and provides links to several Unicode diacritic windows and Mac fonts usable for typing Pali together with ratings and installation instructions. It also provides macros for typing diacritics in OpenOffice and MS Office. SIL, International provides Keras SIL and Keras SIL Compact, Dulos SIL, Gentium, Gentium Basic, Gentium Book Basic fonts. Of them, Keras SIL, Gentium Basic and Gentium Book Basic have all four styles regular, italic, bold, bold italic, so can provide publication quality typesetting. Libertine OpenFont Project provides the Linux Libertine font four serif styles and many OpenType features and Linux Biolinum four sans serif styles at the SourceForge. Junicode, short for Junius Unicode, is a Unicode font for medievalists, but it provides all diacritics for typing Pali. It has four styles and some OpenType features, such as Old Style for numerals. 
Thriamanes includes all the Roman alphabet characters available in Unicode along with a subset of the most commonly used Greek and Cyrillic characters, and is available in normal, italic, bold, and bold italic. Gust Polish Text User Group provides Latin modern and text gyre fonts. Each font has four styles, with the former finding most acceptance among the latex users while the latter is a relatively new family. Of the latter, each typeface in the following families has nearly 1250 glyphs and is available in PostScript, TeX and OpenType formats. The TexGyre Adventure family of sans-serif fonts is based on the URW Gothic L family. The original font, ITC Avant-Garde Gothic, was designed by Herb Lubalin and Tom Carnes in 1970. The TexGyre Bonum family of serif fonts is based on the URW Bookman L family. The original font, Bookman or Bookman Old Style, was designed by Alexander Femister in 1860. The Tex Gyre Chorus is a font based on the URW Chancery L Medium Italic font. The original, ITC Zapf Chancery, was designed in 1979 by Hermann Zapf. The Tex Gyre Cursor family of monospace serif fonts is based on the URW Nimbus Mono L family. The original font, Courier, was designed by Howard G. Bud Kettler in 1955. The Tex Gyre Heroes family of sans serif fonts is based on the URW Nimbus Sans L family. The original font, Helvetica, was designed in 1957 by Max Meetinger. The Tex Gyre Pagella family of serif fonts is based on the URW Palladio L family. The original font, Palatino, was designed by Hermann Zapf in the 1940s. The Tex Gyre Shola family of serif fonts is based on the URW Century Schoolbook L family. The original font, Century Schoolbook, was designed by Morris Fuller Benton in 1919. The Tex Gyre Termes family of serif fonts is based on the Nimbus Roman No. 9 L family. The original font, Times Roman, was designed by Stanley Morrison together with Starling Burgess and Victor Lardent. John Smith provides Induni OpenType fonts, based upon URW fonts. Of them, Induni C is Courier lookalike, Induni H is Helvetica lookalike, Induni N is New Century Schoolbook lookalike, Induni P is Palatino lookalike, Induni T is Times lookalike, Induni C Mono is Courier lookalike but monospaced, and English Buddhist monk titled Bhikkhu Paisala provides some Pali open type fonts he has designed himself. Of them, Akaria is a Garamond style typeface derived from Guru regular, italic, bold, bold italic. Balava is a revival of Baskerville derived from Libre Baskerville regular, italic, bold, bold italic. Kankama is a Gothic, black letter script. Regular style only. Karita has been discontinued. Garava was designed for body text with a generous X height and economical copy fit. It includes petite caps as open type features and heavy styles besides the usual four styles regular italic bold bold italic Guru is a condensed Garamon style typeface designed for economy of copy fit a hundred A4 pages of text set in Pali would be about 98 pages if set in Akaria, 95 if set in Garava or Times New Roman but only 90 if set in Guru regular italic bold bold italic styles Hari is a handwriting script derived from Allura by Robert E. Loishki, regular style only. Hatha has been discontinued. Javita is an original sans serif typeface for body text, regular, italic, bold, bold italic. Kabbalah is a distinctive sans serif typeface designed for display text or headings. Regular, italic, bold, and bold italic styles. Lekhana is a Zapf Chancery clone, a flowing script that can be used for correspondence or body text. Regular, italic, bold and bold italic styles. Mahakampa is a handwriting script derived from Great Vibes by Robert E. Loishki. Regular type style. Mandala is designed for display text or headings. Regular, italic, bold and bold italic styles. Naka is a handwriting script derived from dancing script by Pablo Impolari and released on font squirrel. Regular type style. Odana is a calligraphic brush font suitable for headlines, titles, or short texts where a less formal appearance is wanted. Regular style only. Open Sans is a sans serif font suitable for body text. Ten type styles. Polly is a clone of Herman Zaff's Palatino. Regular, italic, bold and bold italic styles. 
Sukumala is derived from sort Mills Gaudi. Five type styles Talapana is a clone of Gaudi Bertham, with decorative Gothic capitals and extra ligatures in the private use area. Regular and bold styles. Talapada is discontinued. Veluvana is another brush calligraphic font but basic Greek glyphs are taken from Guru. Regular style only. Viraja is derived from Bitstream Vera. Regular, italic, bold and bold italic styles. Virajabda is a cut-down version of Viraja without symbols. For use on PDA devices. Regular, italic, bold and bold italic styles. He also provides some poly keyboards for Windows XP. The font section of Allenwood's Unicode resources have links to several general purpose fonts that can be used for poly typing if they cover the character ranges above. Some of the latest fonts coming with Windows 7 can also be used to type transliterated poly, Arial, Calibri, Cambria, Courier New, Microsoft Sans Serif, Sego UI, Sego UI Lite, Sego UI Semibold, Tahoma, and Times New Roman. And some of them have four styles each hence usable in professional typesetting, Arial, Calibri and Sego UI are sans serif fonts, Cambria and Times New Roman are serif fonts and Courier New is a monospace font. <laughs> Text in ASCII The Velduis scheme was originally developed in 1991 by Franz Velduis for use with his Devnig. Devanagari font, designed for the text typesetting system. This system of representing polydiacritical marks has been used in some websites and discussion lists. However, as the web itself and email software slowly evolve towards the Unicode encoding standard, this system has become almost unnecessary and obsolete. The following table compares various conventional renderings and shortcut key assignments. Topic. See also Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit Magadhi Prakrit Magadhi Pali literature <laughs>